How Socialists Solve the Housing Crisis. This was recommended to me by someone in my comments. So if there's something you want me to watch, leave a comment and I'll probably watch it. This is the Gravel Institute, which is a progressive think tank. So one of the like basic fundamental aspects to most socialist ideologies is the idea that like all of the like basic needs that you need to survive should be guaranteed to you. So like housing, food, medicine, you know, medical services, education, all of these like basic human rights are a guarantee to you no matter what. And I 100% agree with that. Whether that alone makes you a socialist, I would say probably not because socialism in addition to that is like an economic system. But in terms of that basic fundamental aspect to socialist ideology, I 100% am on board with. I, I think everyone's basic human needs should be met as a guarantee. And so housing is one of those things. So I'm curious uh, what this video will be about. Let's take a look. American housing is in crisis. Right now, up to 12 million Americans are behind an average of $5,800 on rent Jesus and risk eviction. Christ, With eviction dude. moratorium soon to expire, we're facing an unprecedented wave of evictions and foreclosures that will crash straight into millions of struggling families across the country. But the truth is, this crisis didn't begin with the pandemic. In fact, housing has been in crisis for a very long time. Even before the pandemic, in places like New York or Los Angeles or San Francisco, median rents for even one bedroom apartments could approach $2,500 a month <laughs> or more. That's about insane, a third of people in Los dude. Angeles spend a majority of their income on housing. In New York City, about 20% of all dude. renters pay most of their income to their landlord. And in my district, Astoria, about a quarter of residents have to spend most of their paycheck on rent. Like, whatever. Socialism capitalism. I, I don't care. Whatever you think, you can't tell me what's happening here is a sign of a healthy socioeconomic system. Clearly change needs to happen. And it, and it can't just be like, I don't know, like what, what if you, like, if you are a capitalist watching this, like someone who's pro more free markets, tell me what you think the solution is here. Is it like, more capitalism or something because like we were at like the maximum amount of capitalism at this point and like everything sucks what about this is healthy to you what about this seems right this is manufactured it's artificial with the american economy we could give every american family housing with no negative repercussions really like the rich could stay rich and you would not have to worry about paying rent that is the reality millionaires and billionaires could stay millionaires and billionaires and we could end homelessness in america certain levels of income should just not have to pay rent we could achieve universal housing in america and not break the bank on millionaires and billionaires and the crisis isn't just in big cities in 95 percent of all u.s counties workers making the minimum don't make enough to afford a one-bedroom rental on their own yeah again i don't know what to say like you can't hear that and think this is a good thing this is evidence that the system we have right now is working. And I'm, and I'm going to tell you right now, the reason these problems are happening, okay? It's not because we have too much socialism. It's not because we have too many regulations, okay? The Harvard Center for Housing Studies warns of a new normal for housing in the United States, in which nearly half of all renter households spend almost a third of their income on rent. That's unbelievable, dude. A third of your income just on your housing there there should be a baseline of universal housing in the united states like that is a no-brainer to me i can't think of a singular good argument as to why at least a baseline of housing that you don't need to pay for for like you know people earning under like who who aren't in the one percent of earners you know what i mean that's why even before the fallout from the coronavirus started to hit more than half a million americans nationwide were already homeless that's gone way up. That's, I think it's close, almost a million now, like 800,000 plus. Millions more on the brink of losing their housing and countless families struggling every month to make ends meet. At the root of all of this suffering is the fact that in this country, housing is treated as a commodity, not a right. Yes, and and in my opinion, fundamentally housing, some some minimal level of shelter is a fundamental right that you should be given by the government, okay? And the best part is, again, it would not break the bank. Like the rich would stay rich. We could, we could, we could get all the money we need from the 1% and 
and not one of them would get to a point where they don't have enough money to live comfortable, fulfilling lives, period. We don't need to tax you guy earning $50,000. We don't need to touch your money. Even people earning a hundred thousand dollars probably wouldn't need to be touched to guarantee housing as a human right. That is how much money we have accumulated to the top. So what is better for American society? If the millionaires and billionaires just have more money in their bank accounts or every American doesn't have to worry about housing. And this is one of those things where like, if you don't have to spend the $2,500 on rent or even a mortgage, that money is used elsewhere in the economy. That money will fuel the economy. Whereas right now it is just sitting in these people's bank accounts. A hundred thousand New York city students are homeless. That's Jesus more than 10% of the entire Christ, student dude. population. Why do so many people end up homeless? Holy shit, It's not because man. there aren't enough homes to go around. There are plenty of empty homes. It's because they're lazy, brother. In fact, housing doesn't have to be seen as a market at all. In other countries, housing is considered a fundamental right, like education or healthcare. That means the government goes to say- I mean, we barely consider education a fundamental right in the United States. Like K through 12, I guess we allow. Um, but after that, you know, college, nope. Healthcare, we definitely don't consider a fundamental right in the, in the United States, let alone housing. Significant lengths to guarantee- These should be fundamental rights, by and the way. the market plays a much smaller role in the construction and distribution of housing. As it should. So let's hop across the pond and about a hundred years back in time to take a look at just one example of how an alternative housing model got started in beautiful red Vienna. And hundreds of thousands of people were crammed into decaying tenements where overcrowding, disease, and violence were rampant. So it's no surprise that in 1919, at the first elections ever held in Austria where all adult citizens could vote, the Social Democratic Party swept into power Let's at go. the level on the promise of dramatic social and economic reform. And they delivered. The new government of Vienna implemented a huge range of services, including public health care and public child care. They built high quality hospitals, schools, and recreational facilities. But their crowning achievement was an ambitious program of social housing, what Americans call public housing, that began in 1923 and saw 60,000 new apartments constructed in the first year of its existence, built Fuck by the government yeah, dude. and financed by taxes on the rich. But these weren't the wait, 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 what? of its existence built by the government and financed by taxes on the rich. One, let's go. That's the solution, dude. Th like, and the best part, the best part, Mr. Millionaire watching this, you will stay a millionaire. You will stay a million billionaire watching this. You will stay a billionaire and every American could be housed. Karl Marx Hoff. That's the other part I want to talk about. What does that mean? But these weren't the kinds of apartments you might picture when you think of public housing in the United States. Drab, high rises, plagued by chronic neglect and underinvestment. Residents could enjoy leafy courtyards, Let's wide open go, spaces, dude. and plenty of natural light. They had shared laundries, state-of-the-art kitchens, food co-ops, bathhouses, pharmacies, <sighs> lecture halls, schools, and swimming pools. This is making me so depressed, dude. It's just, we could have these things. And like... Again, to like relatively very little expense, especially to anyone who's not already filthy rich. Okay. I say this all the time. If you have more money than you or generations of your family below you will ever need to live comfortable, fulfilling lives, your money should be taxed to benefit the rest of the society you live in. I fundamentally believe this. These apartments were designed to be both beautiful to look at and beautiful to live in, fostering a sense of shared community among the people who lived there. And the best part was that because the city didn't have to worry about making a profit, just about paying off their maintenance costs, these homes were both much nicer and much cheaper than what workers had previously known. In 1926, the average rent in Viennese social housing was about just 4% of a monthly wage. The first 15 years- Whereas right Austin now he was like saying it's like 100% of your wage, you know what I mean? Independence saw its capital transform from a symbol of urban blight into a beacon of socialist governance. It became known as Red Vienna, after the official color of the socialists who had pioneered these changes. And even though Red Vienna fell in 1934 when the country was seized by fascists, who did what they could to roll back social housing, that commitment to good, cheap housing remained after the Second World War. Dude, that's so depressing. 
Fascists ruin everything, bro. That's like the one thing you can learn about history is fascists ruin everything. We're seeing it now. We're seeing it right now at play. Today, an astonishing 62% of all city residents live in social housing, with the average monthly rent falling somewhere between $400 and $600 a month, with subsidies for lower income tenants. That is a fraction of what people in America pay. Unlike in the United States, where public housing is treated as a worst case way to house the very poor, Vienna's social housing residents are extremely diverse. Everyone except the top fifth of the population is eligible to live in social housing. That's this awesome, means there's dude. broad appeal across many segments of society, which creates the foundation for its political popularity. That is how the majority of people in Vienna enjoy something that's considered almost utopian here in New York. Affordable housing that isn't just cheap, but desirable. Housing that isn't just four walls and a roof, but a real home with a sense of stability, safety, and community built in. Now, of course, this is only one example of an alternative framework for housing. And Vienna has not fully removed housing from the domain of the market. Residents still pay part of their earnings and rent to cover operational costs, and a sizable chunk of the population lives in private housing. But it's an actually existing alternative that shows us what a step toward a better world could look like. It's a good step. I was going to say, the, the stuff he described there... You know, it's not perfect, but it, it is much better than what we're doing here. And it is a good step for sure. We want to end the housing crisis. The solution has to be moving toward the full decommodification of housing. In other words, yes, moving away from the status quo in which most people access housing by purchasing it on the market and toward a future where we guarantee high quality housing to all as a human right. So how can we do it? I want this. We can start by making sure people who access housing on the private market have ironclad protections against abuse and exploitation. But to go Let's further, go. toward the Vienna- That'll never happen we'll in America, are you kidding me? We can establish community land trusts to gradually buy up housing on the private market and convert it to community ownership. We can give tenants a right of first refusal to buy out their landlords when buildings go up for sale. And we can fully commit to a new era of social housing ending subsidies for luxury housing development and using our wealth to build beautiful, high quality social housing projects that offer good homes and strong communities to everyone. We won't decommodify housing overnight, but we know what we have to do and we have history to guide us. And we know how we'll get there through a movement of the multiracial working class organizing for the better world we know is possible. And we've already begun. I'm Zahran Mamdani, Assemblyman for New York's 36th Assembly District in Astoria, Queens, for the Gravel Institute. We've already begun? I mean, I don't know about that. Um, that This was a little over two years ago now. Maybe I'm just not paying attention, but I don't think the United States is making any steps toward getting anywhere close to anything he described here. Uh, but maybe I'm wrong. But no, this was great. It's never going to happen in the United States. I, I fundamentally believe that.